Jesus visited the Nephites in America and taught them a new way to live similar to the Sermon on the Mount he gave in Jerusalem. In this sermon, given at the Bountiful Temple, he challenged those willing to accept him and keep his commandments to live this new code of personal behavior called the Beatitudes. They are a way we can pattern our lives after the Savior's perfect character and show us the blessings that come from following him. The Book of Mormon account of his sermon in 3 Nephi chapter 12 is more complete than the New Testament account in Matthew chapter 5. The phrase, Come unto me, is added to the first beatitude in 3 Nephi, Blessed are the poor in spirit. If we are poor in spirit and acknowledge our lack of it, we can come unto Christ, who is the source of power that enables us to live the higher law. We must come to him in the depths of humility, with full purpose of heart, and be baptized. Humility causes us to recognize and mourn for our sins and what we lack and make needed changes in our life to repent. Jesus told us to hunger and thirst after righteousness and added in 3 Nephi that we will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Our hunger and thirst for spiritual things and to be reconciled with God keeps us moving on the straight and narrow path. As we battle the natural man and press forward, we must avoid the temptation to leave the path and feel our way toward the great and spacious building that is the pride and vanity of the world. Jesus taught, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In Third Nephi, he added, And at the beginning, and all they who are persecuted, and substituted my name's sake for righteousness' sake. Having been forgiven, we need to forgive others and reflect the mercy we receive from the Savior into others' lives. There is no better place or time to be as he is than when we're hurt by someone and then be merciful to them so we can obtain mercy. Our humility, repentance, and meekness purify our hearts and transform us into the children of Christ, worthy of exaltation, and we will be able to see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. While reducing or eliminating contention is a wonderful thing, another meaning of this beatitude could be to take the gospel of peace to others. When Lehi tasted the fruit of the tree of life and discovered how good it was, he also wanted his family to partake of it. When we've come to Christ and been purified, we want to tell others of this wonderful gift and bring peace to the world through the gospel. We need to endure to the end and continue to do all the things the beatitudes teach us, even when we're persecuted, reviled, and mocked for doing so. The Bible tells us, Ye are the salt of the earth. In a third Nephi, he said, I give unto you to be the salt of the earth. Salt is a preservative, a flavor, and used in sacrifices in the law of Moses. He may have been telling leaders of the people to preserve, guide, and direct them. Jesus taught about the light of the people. The world needs the light of believers to help others see more clearly what they must believe, do, and who to follow. The Savior is the light that shines through us. We can be a candle that furnishes light or a mirror that reflects it. And when we let our light shine so others may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. This would have been especially meaningful to these people who just came through three days of total darkness. The law of Moses was a strict system of acts and ordinances, including animal sacrifice given to help Israelites look forward to Jesus Christ's atonement. He now came not to destroy, but to fulfill this law. All that is good remains, but he has more to give, like a college professor who does not destroy basic arithmetic by teaching advanced calculus, or like missionaries who don't take away truth from those they teach, but only add more to it. Jesus said he is the Jehovah of the Old Testament. That gave the law to Moses and is the law, the way, and the life. The Savior fulfilled the law of Moses when he atoned for our sins and people were no longer commanded to make animal sacrifices that pointed towards his sacrifice. Now they were commanded to offer for a sacrifice a broken heart and a contrite spirit, which was a higher law. The law of Moses defined behaviors, but now the Lord defined attitudes and feelings that lead to those behaviors. Righteousness comes not by limiting what we do, but by changing our internal attitudes that lift and draw us closer to the Lord than the law of Moses did. For example, we're commanded not to kill, but Jesus said we should not even become angry or cause others to become angry, which could lead to murder. We are also commanded not to commit adultery, but the Savior said we should not even look on someone else to lust after them, which could lead to an immoral act. Jesus taught the Nephites that they should love their enemies, and said, I would that ye should be perfect, even as I, or your Father who is in heaven, is perfect. 
Having atoned for our sins and been resurrected, he was now complete and perfect. We won't achieve this in our life through perfect living, but only through perfect repentance, and eventually become complete or whole with a changed heart, desiring to live a celestial lifestyle. To be perfect in this life means to immediately repent and be reconciled back to God. The Bible refers to becoming complete as achieving a natural end like an acorn becomes an oak tree, or a child becomes an adult. Christ does expect us to eventually perfect all areas of our life when we come unto Him, and there now can be perfect areas in our life, like paying a full tithing or living the word of wisdom. 3 Nephi chapter 13 teaches us how to be true disciples of Jesus Christ. We're told to give alms in secret and not to be seen of men. When we do things for the praise of men and then receive it, we have our reward. But when we secretly do good for the glory of God and to bless his children, he sees and rewards us openly. Jesus condemned those who did good things, such as giving alms to the poor, praying and fasting, but did them as hypocrites with the wrong attitude and motivation. In 3 Nephi chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, we're told to pray in our closets, which in Greek means a place of privacy. We're told not to use vain repetitions in prayer that might be described as praying without thinking. A vain repetition could be, please bless the poor, and if we don't pay fast offerings or go out of our way to help those who are in need, or bless those to come next week who didn't come this week, if we don't go out and try to bring them to church. The very basis of our religion is how we treat others, and if we're hypocrites or insincere, then our prayer certainly won't be very meaningful. There's nothing wrong with repetition in prayer. Moroni visited Joseph Smith and repeated his message four times throughout the night, and the Lord certainly uses repetition in his temples. The Lord taught us a pattern for our prayers. He told us to let God's will become our will and learn to accept it. We need to pray to understand His will and not spend our life trying to convince Him that our will should also be His. Forgiveness is required to be forgiven. It must be complete, and Heavenly Father does not care about who started the pain, but that we stop it through forgiving others of their trespasses against us and then start the healing process through the Savior's atonement. Jesus counseled us that our heart is located next to our treasure, time, and money. We need to learn where to put these and have an eye that is single to His glory and focused on heavenly things. Our inner motives are more important than our outward actions, and we need to put aside our own selfish motives and think like Jesus Christ thinks and act like He acts, so we won't seek worldly things. Instead, we will lay up treasures in heaven, and our whole body will be filled with His light. If our eye is evil or focused on things of the world, we won't have the Spirit with us and will be filled with darkness. The Savior commanded his disciples to take no thought for food, drink, or clothing. He said that he wants his servants to go forth into ministry with faith and focus completely on doing his will. It's not often in our life that we can go about not worrying about what we wear or where our food comes from. Full-time missionaries or consecrated servants in the ministry are taken care of, just as his twelve disciples or apostles don't need to focus on things outside of their duties as special witnesses of Christ. Those who put the things of God first in their lives are greatly blessed, and we are all commissioned to seek Christ and share his gospel. If we have not first chosen God's kingdom, it really won't matter in the end what we've chosen instead. At the beginning of 3 Nephi chapter 14, the Savior gave us a solemn warning about judging and included a parable about boards and sawdust that may have come to him in his father's carpentry shop. Imagine someone with a tiny splinter in their eye and a beam like a log in your own eye. How could we try and remove something small out of someone else's eye with a big log in our eye? When we judge incorrectly, we hurt both the one we judge and ourselves, and we often offend when we don't have all the facts. But the Savior told us how to judge when it is necessary to do so. Beware of false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. It is important to constantly judge what is best for us in our own lives and what we watch, spend time and money on, and eat and drink. But we must learn to not judge unrighteously. The Lord promised in 3 Nephi chapter 14, verses 7 and 8, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. 
We need to remember that the Lord answers every prayer, either in the way we want or, more often, in a better way. He told us the way to eternal life is narrow, while the way to destruction is broad, and those who do Heavenly Father's will are able to enter the kingdom of heaven. He gave a parable about building a house on rock or sand, and how if we build upon a solid foundation of rock, we cannot fall. Jesus taught the Nephites about his other sheep and told them, Ye are they of whom I said, Other sheep I have. But his disciples in Jerusalem did not understand this teaching. As we live according to the Savior's teachings, we will have a sure foundation and be strengthened to withstand whatever trials or temptations we may experience. We become the salt of the earth and the light of the people and can help others draw nearer to him. And these are chapters 12 through 16 of 3rd Nephi in the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. I appreciate your comments. You can help support the creation of these by taking advantage of the $8 monthly special with activity puzzles and coloring pages on the Ponder Fun Etsy site shown in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, like and share the Ponder Fun Facebook page, and share these with anyone you think might enjoy them, and I'll keep making new ones. Thanks again for watching, and find some time this week to ponder.